Hey, long time no see, but my absence actually has a reason, because I used the last couple of weeks to develop my 3D time travel shader into a prototype of a real game. And by prototype I mean a very basic demo level for testing out game mechanics I plan to have in my game. But let's start at the beginning. I had this idea to make a game about a world that is destroyed and completely dead since a great catastrophe, and you are stranded in this world and have to explore it. That's when you discover an old artifact from this world that is setting back everything in time to where it was before the catastrophe, but only in a very limited area. Yeah, I know, total original and never seen anywhere before. So this artifact would bring old stuff back to life, fix things that were broken and change the appearance of everything in the area. You can immediately imagine cool puzzle popping up in your head where you need to navigate this artifact through the level in a clever way to activate old machinery and other stuff. Inspirations for my games are quite obviously Zelda Skyward Sword, but also games like Journey, Rim or Omno. Especially Omno to be honest since this game was also developed from one single person and therefore gives a good possibility to define my expectations and what to achieve and overall it was a great motivation for me to start with this game. So it should be a 3D action adventure slash exploring game set in a dead world that once was alive. Also I need an idea for the main character. But I'm not that good at character creation yet, so it should be something simple. While I was collecting ideas, I just realized that this year is the 10th anniversary of the landing of the Mars rover Curiosity on our red neighbor. And that word immediately triggered me. What if I make a game about a Mars rover discovering leftovers of an ancient Mars civilization? This would actually resolve much of my problems. A model of a Mars rover shouldn't be too hard to create and animating a robot should also be no big deal. A wheel driven rover is also quite limited in its movement, so that would give me an excuse in keeping out certain game mechanics like climbing. And it's actually believed that Mars could have been an actual habitable planet a very long time ago. And even if ancient life on Mars would be speculative at best, it would somehow fit into my game idea. So it was decided. I will make a game playing on Mars, enabling the player to discover an ancient Mars civilization. To start with something, I created a very basic version of a rover as a placeholder and gave it some basic movement ability. Great, now it's time to define the scope of the game. It should mostly focus on puzzle solving compared with some exploring of the world. So first thing I had to do is to transfer my time travel shader I already mentioned from something that is just a purely visual effect to something that can actually be used to design puzzles and interact with in-game. While creating the shader I realized it is missing something that is very important for every game and that small little detail is collision. See, the shader is blending dynamically between two objects, but those objects are always completely loaded into the scene. And just some parts of them will be visible or invisible depending on the position of the control node. This means that the collision boundaries of those objects will also be loaded completely into the scene. And well, collisions don't care about visibility. So how to get rid of this problem? I don't know if this is the best way of doing it, but I came up with a solution in that I use CSG nodes for the collision and set up a CSG sphere via script to perform the boolean operation on the collision object. This is indeed quite resource consuming, but as long as I use just simple forms and limit the amount of objects of this kind in one scene, I think I can get away with this. To remember, the time travel transition object I introduced with the time travel shader is taking in two objects of a type transition object that have a function to update the shader to blend in and out between the old and the new object depending on the sphere object. I extended this transition object class into a collision transition object that holds a reference to the described CSG sphere and sets its position and radius based on the same parameters that were used to update the shader. To differentiate between the blend in and the blend out object, I need to set up one CSG sphere to an intersection and the other to subtraction, 
since one collision should only be where the time travel area is and the other collision shape should be everywhere except where the time travel area is. I hope that makes sense for you. And now we can set up objects with a collision that can be changed dynamically at one time. You can even use it to interact with other physics objects. How cool is this? Like I said, CSG nodes are quite resource intensive and the official documentation is actually saying not to change the CSG node composition at runtime. But for now it's working for me and I don't notice big performance drops even on my crappy notebook. But if you know a better way of doing this, I would be so thankful if you would let me know in the comments. Additionally to this new collision transition object, I separately came up with a second completely different approach. Instead of blending between two objects based on the overlapping area, I completely switch out one object when it's overlapped by the time area and replace it with another. For this I also created a custom class called time travel switch object. This class holds two resource paths to separate objects, one old and one new. In the process function of this class runs a hard coded state machine that is notoriously hard for me to explain, but I try it. Basically it checks what object should be the current active object and loads this into the scene as a child, while unloading the other. The objects that can be switched between must be from the type switch object, which is also a custom class I created. Like the class for a transition object, this class just exists to handle input for the custom shader. This time this shader allows to set two values. One is setting the alpha value and the other is setting the color of the object to a blue emissive color. On this way I create a smooth transition between the two objects when they switched in and out. Otherwise they would just be replaced from one frame to another without any visual effect. The good thing about completely adding and removing the object from the scene is that all its processing stops and collision boundaries also disappear. So the invisible object will not interfere with the game in any way. Downsize of this is obviously that you cannot switch out and in half of the object. It's always a full switch. This may look weird when the object is very big and parts of it reach out of the time area. On the other hand, since the object gets loaded out and in again, it's now possible to have special behavior in these situations. For example, an animation for the transition phase, like things reassemble or fall apart when switching between the old and the new version. I think this will be quite useful in the future. The first thing I created using this new switch object was hovering platform that is broken when outside the time area and falls to the ground, but as long as it's in the time area it gets reactive and follows a path, or should I say is forced to follow a path? Because to handle different behaviors of the old and new version of the object, I needed some surrounding entity that will handle this. So I created a new object of type path the 3D path points and the time travel switch object. I made the time travel switch object emitting a signal when it switched between the objects and I subscribed to the signals in the surrounding path object. Now whenever the time travel switch object is switching between its version, the path node is informed and will either apply gravity to the object or move it along the path, depending if the old or the new version is currently active. Just a side note, in order to make the player stick to the platform while it moves, the platform needed to be of type kinematic body. Otherwise the platform will just move without the player. Keep that in mind if you try to recreate something like this. And that's it for now. I have two basic game mechanics I can combine to create puzzles. The collision transition object allows to implement interesting physics puzzles where you need to get the time area to overlap just right with the object. The switch object on the other hand can be used in all kind of sequential puzzles where the right order or timing is important. Now the next thing I need to do is to get creative and set up some clever puzzles for my game. I mean, how hard can this be?